one of my mini trips to Japan, I once made a private visit to the Rienji Buddhist temple northwest of Kyoto. This temple is world famous, mainly thanks to its incredible Zen Rock Garden, a UNESCO heritage site since 1994. The garden is actually a 248 square meter rectangular plot. I was mesmerized the very first time I saw it and it still inspires the same feelings in me today. The garden is comprised of white gravel representing the ocean and 15 stones symbolizing mountains. The stones are carefully arranged into five groups of five, two, three, two and three stones respectively. When looking at the garden from any angle, and I insist on that point, from any angle, only 14 stones are visible at once. One of them is always hidden from view. Visiting that garden enabled me to put a name to my own view of the world, whether it be the business world or the private sphere. And I believe very firmly that we should never, never be content with what we think we, we know, but we must seek new perspectives. If we observe the 14 stones from a particular angle, from a particular place, and if by moving along the terrace surrounding the garden we then discover the missing 15 stone, it means we have lost sight of another. In other words, our vision of the world around us can never be complete, but only partial. We never, never see the world panorama, but only fragments. And it is that inability to see everything at once that opens us up to possibilities, makes us capable of imagining new ideas, designing new solutions, finding new interpretations, or building on what already exists. The Rienji philosophy perfectly applies to the business world and its constantly changing nature. During my conferences and seminars, I always stress that we have to keep on looking for the missing 15 stone, even if we think we have already found it. This is the philosophy that teaches us the art of entering, which is, to me, the state of the art innovation. I would like to explain briefly the content of the BEL approach, which is a part of the art of entering. I've developed this business approach with my close friend Jonas Hoffman after having analyzed years long different companies in pre porte watchmaking, art, gastronomy, jewelry and so on in different countries and is based of course on my own experience as well. BEL, five letters, B for believing. A for anticipating, A for acting, R for reaching, E for entering. B for believing. Believing this is the passion that drives an entrepreneur, a business leader, a CEO. It is a vital energy that cannot be taught or created. Either you have belief or you don't. It cannot be learned even at the most prestigious business schools. It is a force that money can neither buy nor inspire. It is the cornerstone of everything we build. It is that first stage, too, that reveals the strength of an entrepreneur, a business leader, a CEO who needs sufficient self-belief to develop what he or she wants and not what the customer or even the investor wants or is supposed to want. As Henry Ford famously said, if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said, faster horses. B for believing, A for anticipating. Anticipating is the crystal clear vision every business leader, every CEO, every entrepreneur needs of the markets, the environments, and the state of competition. In a sense, this is about predicting future developments. In that example, you can see a believer drawing a writing instrument with a feather in his hands. This is clearly anticipation, isn't it? B for believing, 
A for anticipating, A for acting. Acting, it's time to move to action and launching one's product in the different key markets. This process requires skills and resources to be developed accordingly. Believing, anticipating, acting, reaching. Here we have very important aspects. Reaching, we are not looking for customers, but for fans or future fans of the brands. We are looking for the people who will love the brand, its products, and be real ambassadors for it. The emotional aspect is key to this. And last but not least, E for enduring. Enduring, this is the temporal aspect, and serving the challenges that the brand can stand the test of time and go from strength to strength. I would like not to go deeper into my analysis of the art of enduring. Let's see together how we can develop a very long lasting business, living hundreds of years and why not more than a millionaire. The oldest business in the world, sorry I should say the oldest family business in the world, is a Japanese firm, the Nishiyama Onsen Kayunkan. It's a hotel, 35 rooms, and it was founded in 705. Once again, it was founded in 705. The hotel has no internet, no television, and a very weak mobile coverage network. Here, a living proof that it is indeed possible to endure without hyper-connectivity. There are 50,000 businesses in Japan, family businesses, more than 100 years old. And there are 3,800 family businesses more than 100, uh, 200 years old. If you are interested in understanding the secret of durability, for sure, Japan is one of the key places to do so. For that reason, in the summer of 2017, I boarded a flight to Japan, specifically to Komatsu. Komatsu is home to an ancient Ryokan. Ryokan is an um, old Japanese inn, still in the business, named Hoshi, and founded in 718. Once again, founded in the year 718. To this day, the Ryokan is still owned by the same family. Zango Hoshi, the 46th generation of the family managing the Hoshi Ryokan, after long hours discussion, shared with me the secret of durability, which are, according to him, first, make mistakes in order to understand and move forward more durably. Make mistakes in order to be able to question yourselves constantly. And last but not least, learn for yourself from experience. Like a tree whose roots grow deeper when it faces the wind, it is only by getting things wrong and learning from one's mistake that a business can truly take roots for hundreds, hundreds of years and why not more than a millionaire. I would like now to share with you something very personal. It's not connected to the business world, but 100% to the art of entering. I love running. I love running marathons, trails, and neutral trails. And what I like most is getting out into nature and being alone with myself. For years, it was a dream of mine to run on the Lake Baikal in Siberia, in Russia. It is considered as one of the toughest marathons in the world on the frozen lake in temperatures that can be as low as minus 30 or even minus 40, minus 45 degrees. Only a hundred runners brave it each year. It was a challenge, but it was my dream and I knew I could do it. And I also knew I had to be patient. I gave myself two years to prepare for that incredible race, one of the most extremes in the world. And I created a dedicated training program. 
then eight months approximately before running on the Lake Baikal, on the frozen lake, I took part in an ultra trail in South of France. And for the first time in my life, I was not able to finish the race. I had hypothermia. My body was overheating and could not cool down. What could I do? It was a terrible experience for me. If I kept on running, I would be putting myself in serious danger. My mind, my mind was telling me to keep going, but my body, my body was very close to the point of no return. I was forced to stop, struck down with leg cramps and vomiting. It was not my proudest moment in life, as you can easily imagine. My friends and family all told me that it was a sign and I had to stop running marathons, trails and ultra trails. But I was determined, so determined, that nothing, nothing could stop me and I kept on training. And a few weeks later, I was not able to run at all. I had a terrible pain because of my left calf. And I had x-rays, I consulted um, doctors, sports doctors, but nothing, nothing worked. Apparently, my body was very fine and there was no explanation for the pain, but I was not able to run anymore. My friends, my family told me that I had to stop running again and again, but I had the conviction I should keep going. I could not explain why, but it was something inside of me. So I took the time to look at what I'd been doing wrong, and I realized very quickly that I'd been training too hard. My body simply could not take the strain I was putting on it. So I learned from my mistakes. And eight weeks, I insist on that point, eight weeks only, before running on the frozen Baikal Lake, I decided to change my training program. And I started walking 20 kilometers a day, every day. It was a fast walking, but never, never running. Yet again, my friends and my family told me that my new training program was no longer suited to a challenge of that scale. And yet again, I ignored them and followed only my own conviction. And finally, the big day arrived. Alongside around 100 runners coming from 30, 35 countries, I lined up at the start of one of the toughest, one of the most grueling races in the world, running on the frozen lake in extreme temperatures. And you know what? It went extremely great. Not only did I finish the race, but my time was quick enough that I no can dream of running the North Pole Marathon. It will be my next challenge. If I had to conclude about the art of enduring, and if I had to give you one piece of advice on how to set a course and keep going, no matter what can happen or what other people around you are telling you, life it would be this. Business or in your private life, it would be this. Be patient, be perseverant, and always, always have faith. It's funny, because those three things are actually one and the same. But it is that unity that drives the oldest businesses in the world and the people who believe in life.